Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. My name is Minori Ravindran, and I'm international editor for Variety based out of London. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be presenting Variety and the Edinburgh TV Festival's Outstanding Achievement Award to Jodi Comer. Um, her co-star in The Last Duel, Matt Damon, recently called Jodi a generational talent, and it's not hard to see why. She's already won an Emmy and a BAFTA and has to be has to have one of the most impressive acting CVs I can think of in recent years, starring in everything from Dr. Foster uh, and 13 to Killing Eve and most recently uh, Health. She's also made her fil film debut in a big way, uh, starring alongside Ryan Reynolds in Free Guy uh, and most recently with Matt Damon, Ben Affleck and Adam Driver in The Last Duel. Jodi, we're absolutely delighted to have you here with us uh, today. Thank you so much um, for your time. What has the last year and a half been like for you? Because I think most people have been hunkered down at home, but you've been so busy, you've been out there filming, promoting things. Um, tell us a little bit about the experience. Yeah, well, you know, I did get a lot of time at home. What was strange was we were actually a month into filming the last duel when the, um, the pandemic hit. So we were like everyone forced to kind of sit down for five or six months um, before we picked back up. So, um, you know, when we picked back up in the September and I just remember how grateful everyone was to be to be back on a set and working and, you know, and then was very fortunate enough to to start help in the January, which was when we'd just gone into the third lockdown. So um, it, it's it's surreal as well because all the projects came out within a month of each other. <laughs> so I, I think it probably looks like I've been way busier than what I have been. But, um, you know, just feel incredibly lucky that I was able to, be a part of these projects um that I really really care about in a time when um you know a lot of things were up in the air and we weren't really certain that we'd be able to get back on a set um because it is incredibly intimate you know so yeah just very grateful for that of course and you made your film festival debut as well right at Venice I, I was there um I mean tell tell me a little bit about that what a glamorous debut I know I know um it was very surreal it was it was it was lovely because uh, what was my first film festival and also obviously having spent a lot of time of, away from those kinds of events I feel like I came back with a new appreci appreciation for what those things are and they can be you know um I felt strangely calm which was surreal but um I really just kind of soaked it all up and and took it in and you know was back in a cinema with a lot of people which you know, I really, really, really missed and um, was thought I was going to be way more nervous about watching a film with a lot of people. Um, but it was it wasn't it wasn't that bad. But it was just great to be back with the team and to celebrate, you know, and and to speak about the film that we'd we created. Yeah. And I definitely want to talk more about The Last Duel later on as well, just because it is it is fantastic. Um, and you are just, you know, you you're magnificent in it. I think it's going to be, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised to see more of you, you know, later in the in award season uh -huh. for, for your role. Um, you were brilliant. But I just want to sort of, you know, reflect a little bit as well in terms of um, kind of coming up within, you know, within the UK industry um, and all the shows that you've, that you've sort of worked on over, over time. Um, you know, you kind of got your start in things like Holy City, Waterloo Road, Doctors. How key are those programs for, for people who are coming up in the industry? How did it sort of affect you, I suppose, early on in your career? Oh, my God. I feel like they're essential. And I feel like there's like an inside joke within the UK of like, you know, you that it's kind of a duty that you have to do to, <laughs> to like get into the industry, you know, that I think like most people have done an episode of Holby or um, Casualty or, you know, they're so ingrained in, in the culture here. Um, you know, when you grow from those experiences, you know, I remember doing those kind of coming in for something for one episode and looking at the rest of the cast and being like, oh, wow, these guys get to come in every day and they all have really solid relationships with each other and characters that they can live in for, a you know, a good amount of time. And um, so then, you know, I remember when I got my role in Mad Fat Diary, and that was the first series I ever got. And I was like, oh, amazing. I'm going to spend five months with a, a group of actors similar to my own age and, and get to explore this character. Um, so you really learn a lot um, 
from all of those experiences. Plus I, I grew up watching those shows. So they just, it just felt so triumphant when I came home and was like, mom, I'm in a episode of the Royal today. And you know, it's like champagne sparklers. It was like, it was just the biggest thing, you know, it was such a, yeah, it felt like such a big victory for me. And what would you say was the turning point? Because I mean, for me personally, I remember I was living in Canada at the time, but watching Dr. Foster on Netflix. And I remember Kate Parks. I remember you in that role and just obviously see you later on. It was, but you were so, you know, you were fantastic. You really made an impact. But would you say, was it that, was it a little bit earlier on perhaps? Oh gosh. I think, you know, I think every role contributes to something. I think, I remember when I did 13, which was a, like a five part um, one-off drama for BBC three and BBC one, I think. Um, and that was my first lead. And I was like, well, okay, you know, and like really understanding what kind of comes with, with that. Um, I mean, Dr. Foster was huge. It was crazy how, how, how much that really resonated with an audience. And I was really grateful, you know, coming back to the second season that they explored Kate a little bit more because in the first season, I felt like she was, she was integral to the story, but I had very little to dig my teeth into, you know? So it was great when we came back for the second season. And, um, you know, I think like with any with any series, Mad Fat Diary did the same when you play around with perspective and you give another character an opportunity to tell their side of the story. It always makes such a um, an interesting wave with, with the people who are watching it. Um, so I was very, very grateful for that. Mm. And and you're obviously filming your, you know, the final, fourth and final season yeah. of Killing Eve, which has been just a huge part of your, you know, your career in, in, in TV, but just in general, isn't it? Um, yeah. what, what were your sort of first impressions on that, that role, sort of rewinding a little bit? And how involved have you been in sort of developing the character as well? Because it feels as though Villanelle has really been on a, a journey the last few seasons. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember just, I remember getting the first episode and Phoebe's name being on the email and I was just like and I'd recently watched Fleabag and I was just like oh god I I I have to do this I want to do this like I have I have to get this role and I remember emailing my agent and I was like like I really want to get this and she was like yeah me too but like <laughs> you have to get it like you, you have to get it first and I was like yeah I know I know I know um you know and just knowing and witnessing how unique Phoebe was and reading the script and it just felt very fresh and exciting but you know we could have never predicted the journey that it it went on and continues to go on and um you know how it kind of was received in that first year was just so enormous like I'd never experienced anything like that in my life um you know and it's what I'm so grateful for for that for this show is is it's really helped me find my own voice in a sense of my instincts, what I like, what I dislike, what I feel is right for my character without like being pretentious or, um, you know, sometimes when actors are like, oh, my character wouldn't do that. And you're like, is that just you not wanting to do something or would your character really not do that? Um, you know, so just kind of witnessing that about myself and, also, you know, there's a, a beautiful part of the process of each year The you know, the team brings in a new um, lead writer and they're often, um, you know, always women who are kind of um, relatively new and it gives opportunity and, um, you know, and I've spent four years with her now. So I feel like I have a real good sense of who she is and where she's at, which just like makes for really interesting conversations. You know, the producers have always made it very clear that they they want my input and my ideas and, you know, nothing's off limits. So it's it's really great because it's a, a real collaboration when you can all sit around a table and um, and feed off of each other and see what the best outcome is, you know, nobody's precious, which I think makes for a good way of working. Absolutely. No, I mean, it's just, it's, it's been a real joy to, to really see that show develop. Um, I mean, I was interested, you know, you recently said that you, people ask you about the accent, you know, doing that in public. I mean, you do so many accents on the show, but, um, you know, 
and which you which you don't want to do, which is completely fair. Do you feel as though you're kind of coming to an end in terms of like, does it feel like the nat- a natural time to to rest that character and or you know, could there could there be something more? I know they've talked about spinoffs uh, later on as well. Yeah, I think for me, and I know for everyone who's a part of the show, like you know, it's such a high quality and we never ever want to, for that to drop or, you know, to carry on a story for the sake of carrying it on, you know, whether that be greed or well, whatever, whatever reason, you know, it feels like where we are right now, it feels, it feels natural that we've come to this point where now we can really focus on the ending, you know, it's not, you're not having to think, oh, but if there's another two seasons, then we can't make this really bold decision or we can't, you know. So I think um, I think the writers are enjoying that freedom. Um, you know, and of course it's sad. It's, it's always sad to let something go, especially something that's been a huge part of your life. But I think I'd much rather had walk, walked away from something and have been really satisfied with, the work that we had done than to be like kicked out of the door. (laughs) You know, everyone's like, can you just start making that show now? (laughs) Um, So yeah, it's bittersweet. So do you, I mean, I'd heard that Fiona Shaw might get a spinoff, for example. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, early, early talks, but that was sort of. I will watch that. I I think every other person on the planet will as well. She's, she's wonderful. Um, I think they're definitely keeping options open. Like I have by no means been a part of any conversations, but I think, you know, part of this world is it is so colorful and there, there are so many avenues and, you know, we have some new introductions, to different characters this year. And so I think the possibilities are, are, you know, could be endless within this, within this world. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is it a good send off? Do you think, the, you know, what, what, what can we expect when it comes out? Oh my God, it's <laughs> too big a question. Um, I hope so. I, we've really tried just to stay true to the journey in which the characters have, have been on this far. You know, um, you always have to pick up from the previous season and can have a continuation of that whilst also trying to move them on in a, in a new way. Um, you know, it, picks up in a really interesting way. There's a particular episode at the start um, with Villanelle um, where we've really explored some new um, (laughs) things. I'm too scared to give anything away. Um, But it's bold, you know, and it's loud and it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, You know, and it felt like we were coming to this final season and going, right, well, we feel like we've, we've, discovered and explored so much like what else can we do where can we go um so it's been it's been really fun have you ever talked to phoebe about doing something something else further down the road like outside of this universe oh, yeah something? i'm literally begging her to cast me in everything like because i know she's like right in a million things probably and <laughs> i'm always just like can you just remember to cast me um <laughs> which i'm sure she has all of her you know everyone who she's worked with in the past like banging her door down to work with her again um, you know, that anticipation is kind of killing me as to what she's going to do next. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, she knows I would be on that set. Like, like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so quickly. That's brilliant. What about Sandra as well? I mean, obviously, you know, you guys were just so amazing diabolical together on screen. Like what, what, what has that relationship been like? And like, how will you sort of say goodbye to her too? I'm Canadian. So Sandra was very, very close to my heart. Well, I've, I've also worked with so many Canadians who are just like the best, like it's official. Yeah. Um, it's been so wonderful, you know, because we always have such an open dialogue and we've been in this together as, as with, you know, the other lead cast um, for a very, very long time. And we always check in when, you know, we're not, if we're not on set with each other for, for lengthy periods of time. Um you know, and I just always remember how um, incredibly warm she was to me. And, and that's continued throughout, um, you know, when we've been on this on this journey together. So I'm not quite ready for the day that we wrap. Like I've been get, I've been thinking about it a little bit more. And I remember the day we wrapped on season one when we were in Villanelle's apartment and how emotional I was then. And now I'm like, oh, my God, it's just going to be so weird when it's like, 
this is it, you know, and especially with the crew who, you know, there's many new faces this year um, who now feel like they've been with us forever. And there's a lot of crew that have been with us since season one, season two. Um, so yeah, it's very surreal. That's going to be huge. Yeah. When that's, I mean, I can't imagine it's been yeah. such a big part of the last five years in terms of the UK as well. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about help because I saw that. Um, I actually, I, I saw Jack Thorne a few weeks ago for London Film Festival. Um, and, you know, he asked me whether I liked it. I said that I had a visceral, you know, I felt visceral rage when I saw it. And he was like, good. Just thought you were incredible in it. I thought it was brilliant. Why was it important for you to take on, um, you know, a drama, a drama quite like that? Yeah. Well, I think for me, it was something I hadn't done before. Um, you know, I was a huge admirer of Jack's and uh, Stephen Graham, who I acted alongside, has become a friend over the years. And, you know, I feel like so much of his work um, speaks about really important things. And I'm always so incredibly moved by the work that he does. Um, and it just felt really important. And it was very relative to today, you know, um, and to have that opportunity to collaborate with those people and, and, you know, approach this and explore this. Um, I just, I just, it, I just wanted to do it immediately. You know, I was, me and Stephen were a part of those conversations very, very early on. And we always had a very distinct idea of what we wanted to, wanted it to look like and what we wanted it to feel like. And um, it just came together so beautifully. Um, and, there was, a, there was something about that experience that um, I'd never felt before, you know, because the piece felt, it felt bigger than us all and there was no ego. Um, you know, it felt like we were there to serve something greater than us and hopefully do it in a truthful, authentic and respectful way. You know, it had to really be handled with care and um, it was a very immersive experience, um, you know, especially for people who have seen it, you know, in regards to the really long takes, you know, there was a lot of rehearsal and it was almost like a dance, you know, everyone who was a part of those sequences um, had to be moving in unison with each other. Um, so it really created a feeling of, of, um, of togetherness. And then, you know, to see what, what Mark um, Munden did in the edit and everything that he brought to it, um, and then to see the reaction, you know, and to see how how it really did move um, everybody who watched it and to the people who work in care homes and experienced this in real life, how they felt that we'd handled it. Um, it just felt important. And I really realized, actually, you know, we can we can act to entertain and we can act to um to really kind of give back to our communities and um, expose and also explore the reality of what it is that we may be living in at any given moment. Um, and I think there's like a great power in that. It's probably, I mean, you know, the, some, I would say one of the most political things that you've, that you've yeah. done. Was that vulnerable for you as well? I mean, cause that the monologue at the end specifically to camera is quite, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really, it's really impactful. Yeah. Do you know what? It didn't feel vulnerable for me because I believed in it. Like I wasn't, I didn't feel shy about, I think to be a part of a show like this, you have to resonate with it and you have to agree with what it's saying. Um, and I felt that from the very, very beginning. So there was, I didn't feel coy about exploring that and showing that side of myself through Sarah, you know, um, and to have Jack's words, and, and explore it with him, um, you know, and he's so, I mean, his scripts are just so beautifully written and raw. Um, it made me think I want to do this a lot more, actually, was the way it made me feel. Yeah, yeah. of course. And, um, you know, the, I guess what was interesting to me as well, help came at a time when we've seen you in Free Guy, we know you're coming up in the, in the last duel, and then you have the sort of, 
wonderful drama for Channel 4, um, you know, it's a single drama. How do you sort of, is that a consideration for you in terms of like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm really going to make a concerted effort to, to, to work for, or to, you know, to do um, projects for the local PSBs as well. Like, is that a, is that something you, you think about? It, it wasn't, it was, um, I mean, we'd met like maybe nine months before we started shoot and help. And it was a bit of a, uh, kind of nightmare puzzle trying to figure out when anyone was going to be free, like when we could actually shoot it. And then we got to January and it was like, we have a time now. And then, you know, we, we took it to channel four, which was just like a no brainer, you know, that was always what we envisioned that the home would be. Um, and I think from, I think, you know, I think it just, it's incredible to be able to do all of these things. Um, I love television like so much. It's been a huge part of my life and especially to do television of like this standard, um, you know, I feel incredibly honored to have had the opportunity. Um, so it's not something I make a conscious decision of. Um, it's just like, why wouldn't you, you know, if, if, if that's where the project is that really makes you feel something and you desperately want to be a part of, then that's where I'm going. You know, it doesn't matter what it is um, what, what kind of format that is. I think if it speaks to me, then, then, then that's where I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah. And, and what has it been like transitioning? I shouldn't say transitioning, but, but, um, but I suppose doing more film work, kind of working within the Hollywood system a little bit more. Um, tell me a little bit about Free Guy. Cause that was that, I, I suppose, obviously we should say that you, you were, Ray's mother as well, right? In Star Wars. Yes. You did have a little bit of a taste of that before too. Yeah, one day, (laughs) one tiny little taste. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I'd always had an insecurity of, oh, I'm a TV actress and I'm never going to do film and film is so other. and, And then, you know, I got Free Guy and I realized that it's very much the same. It's just ginormous. Um, but, you know, the way you approach your role is the same and um, the people are the same. You know, that kind of morale on set is the same. And, um, you know, you're all kind of working towards this one thing. Um, but it was just huge, you know, just seeing the the scale of the sets, the the green screen, the kind of decision making, you know, there's so many people you have to go through to make a decision about something, whether it's costume or makeup or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, So there's just a lot more people involved, you know, and, and, and I understand because it's like, these things are such a beast, you know, and when you fully comprehend and realize like how many people, you know, pre-COVID as well like go to the cinema and invest in these films and the detail that goes into them in post it's not just about what happens on set it's everything that happens afterwards when we've moved on onto our next jobs and you know people are still very much working on it um but it was it was wonderful and it was a very kind of calm and playful and fun set which I think um you know, and, and Ryan and Sean had a lot of space and a lot of time for me and um, which was great really as a kind of like introduction to then going on to Ridley's set, which just worked in a very, very different way. Um, you know, and I felt like I was where I should be, you know, um, spend a lot of time, you know, we should always be grateful, but I think I've spent a lot of my time you know, being like, oh yeah, you know, like, I, I don't know, like I'm lucky to be here and like, I've won a competition kind of thing. And, and there was something about doing the last year where I was like, I felt like I'd stepped into myself and own, like took ownership of, of where I was and, 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 you know, what I'd done to get there. And that was, that was really, that was really nice. <laughs> that's amazing no absolutely yeah. <laughs> I mean but then you know now I'm like now I'm going on to different projects where I've you know I've always kind of championed myself on a challenge and and now I've t- taken on some new challenges and I'm like ah oh, okay now I have to you know you're constantly evolving and having to grow and learn and um you know now it's like you know that's what I have to do now and yes. yeah put my money where my mouth is so yeah 
So what, what do you have to do now? What, what is the next step for you? Um, I'm doing another film with uh, Ridley called Kit Bag. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'm doing a, a theatre play in London next year in the West End, um, which, again, you know, that I got sent the script and just completely fell in love with it. And it was just kind of sent to me with no attachment of like, this is on offer or, or you can you audition for this? And I was like, is this like for me? Like, what's the situation? And, and I was like, I don't know, actually, let me check. And then they were like, no, like if you, you know, if you want to be a part of it, we'd, we'd love to speak with you. And, um, you know, it's something very new to me and I'm going to have to learn a lot. And, um, but again, just reading, reading the script and, and being so moved by it and feeling like I have to be a part of this. I have to do this you know, and I feel like those urges and those impulses and, and those emotions, they don't lie to you, you know, like, I feel like whatever that initial feeling is, is usually um, something to cling on to. And it's quite interesting, I find your West End debut, because most, you know, a lot of actors go the other way, right? They sort of start out on the stage, and then they go to TV, and they go to film, and you're sort of kind of coming at it from a from a different angle. It's so that's so interesting that, you know, you kind of viewed that as a a new challenge, because I mean, of course, it would be completely different, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, you know, I've done a lot of theatre auditions throughout the years. And um, a lot of the feedback was often very, very positive, but it was always, you know, she's not trained, she's not theater trained, she hasn't gone to drama school, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I used to get quite defeated by that. And then and then I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I think it, the right thing will come along with a director who believes in me and who wants to do that extra work, whatever needs to be done, and we'll both put the time in. And so then when, you know, I met with Justin Martin, who's, who's directing the play um I was like okay here it is it's arrived you know this kind of this meeting and um and I was like okay he believed you know to have someone believe in you in that way um was really really wonderful and like you say it's just nice to step out of your comfort zone I think and do something that's a little unfamiliar and something that does scare you and um you know means you're gonna have to do your homework and and get ready for sure for sure do do you feel as though in terms of the types of characters that have been because I mean just I was thinking of everything that you've kind of come to inhabit with with um Villanelle and Marguerite and your character in Free Guy I mean these are really sort of ass kicking women like I mean do, do you feel so Villanelle sort of opened a door in terms of I guess the physicality of that role too and sort of you know kind of being a really good calling card in terms of what you're able to portray and do as an actor has that sort of was that it do you think or you know what's yeah well I think what she enabled was like people to see me in many many different lights you know and and that's the beauty about getting to play women like this and that's why it's so important is that like women aren't one dimensional, you know, I got to explore so much through Villanelle and it was, it was really interesting then uh, the response that that got in regards to what people would consider me for, or, you know, people then go, Oh, they have to see it to believe it in a way. And, you know, she is so complex and so interesting that she did kind of set a bar, (laughs) you know, it's like, Oh my God, where do you go from here? Um, you know, but she is so incredibly unique. You know, I don't think there's many villanelles. I think she was one of those characters that comes by, um, you know, not very often. Um, so I was, you know, so wonderful that, I, that I'm able to play her. Um, so yeah, it probably, it probably did in many ways. Um, and also just, I think, you know, then really understanding my own, what I feel is my own ability and what I can give to a role. And then just, you know, when I'm reading something, assessing if, if the, the role allows me to show that, or if I feel, you know, I can bring something maybe unassuming or interesting to it. Maybe that doesn't meet the eye or you just want to make sure that you leave a day's film and feeling fulfilled, you know, and feeling challenged in whatever, whatever way that may be. I think that's what I'm always, always chasing. Um, I never, strangely, never want to feel comfortable, (laughs) which probably says a lot about me as a person. I don't know. Um, But yeah. (laughs) 
But you're, you're, you know, with the, the last duel, obviously, I know your co-stars have spoken so highly of your performance and it's obviously very obvious when you, when you see the movie, um, you're working with Ridley again, aren't you, with, with yes. Kids Bag? And that's another sort of period piece. Is that an area that you're sort of looking to kind of do? I know, I know with White Princess and whatnot as well, you had a little yeah. bit of or two. Do you know what? I was like, um, definitely. I mean, I love period dramas. It's also something I've wanted to do since I was, you know, like 14. Um, so to, to be exploring that now is, is incredible. Um, definitely like in the future, I'd love to do something um, maybe more of like an independent film, maybe with a science fiction element, something very present day, but like very rooted in humanity. Um, you know, that's definitely something that's on my mind that I'd, I'd love to explore next. Um, but I mean, the opportunity came from Ridley and I was just like, absolutely. Um, you know, Josephine is such an interesting woman and is so fearless again there's another part of myself that I have to delve into and expose and explore through her uh, which I've never done before um I feel like on screen and and, and through a character so um again it's going to be an, another huge challenge and but I think what I love about period dramas is just that kind of transformation you know even now doing some um costume and hair um test for kit bag it's like oh it's just so exciting because it becomes so much easier to step out of yourself and and into somebody else um you know and you're working with such talented people who are the best at what they do and to have all those resources and work as a team um so exciting and it's you know and then seeing like like said being a part of the last duel and seeing that in the cinema and the scale of it and the cinematography and the just everything is just um so breathtaking in a way of you know I guess like being a part of something you you don't your younger self would always wished she would would do was pretty cool everything that I've read in terms of how you are on set, you seem very collaborative and you've got opinions and you're, and you're helping sort of craft characters. Are you interested in doing any, you know, like Stephen Graham, actually, when I spoke with him a few, a couple of years ago, you know, he was setting up his production company, yeah. um, you know, which is, which is going really well. Are you sort of, would you do something like that in yourself, given some of the characters that you've played and the stories that you've helped sort of bring into this world? Is that something that you're interested in at all? Definitely. Definitely. I think as well, you know, when you, you know, a couple of years ago, it was kind of brought to me that like, oh, if you read a book or you read an article that you think's interesting, like you can, you can buy that and you can develop it. And like that had just never entered my head before. So I really, you know, love the idea of being able to kind of take control of that narrative and explore stories that I genuinely believe in and want to be a part of. And, um, you know, I think, you know, you're so lucky if you're, if you're able to do that, but also like, like Sir Steven, you know, he's now, he's now producing things and he's doing that. And it's so admirable. And it's just, you know, to, to see people actually taking control um, of the narrative, I think is, is really, um, really, really empowering. And also like, I've really enjoyed being a part of conversations for things in like, you know, uh, kind of, um, you know, things might be coming into fruition immediately, but being a part of things for in, devel in development and being on Zooms and talking through drafts and doing notes. And like, when I was younger, I always just thought acting was like, you learn your lines, you go to set, you go home. And, um, you know, now just kind of learning that there's so much more to be a part of and actually you feel much more fulfilled when you can be a part of all those conversations and, and also listen to other people's ideas, you know, like sitting in a room and there may be something you've missed or someone has an idea and you're like, God, I never thought of that. That's such a genius idea, you know, and feeding off of everyone. Um, I think it's all about the people who you, who you work with, which really make an experience what, what it is. So have you optioned anything? Have you, have you taken any steps to sort of fulfill that? <laughs> Um, but uh -huh. no, nothing is like official and it's not you know I, I definitely can't speak about anything but it's um no I'm definitely having those kinds of of conversations but then you also realize and appreciate the time you know 
that goes into these things and they don't happen overnight. And, um, you know, that's been really eye opening for me when you, you know, when you hear of projects when it's been like four years in the making and you're like, wow, you know, this has been a huge part of people's lives. Um, to, to, br- to even get to the point of being on a set, you know, you know, how much work goes into it before that is, is incredible. Um, so yeah. What's your dream project? Like what, what's something as an actor or producer, you know, however, you know, what would you uh, be a part of? Dream project. I really want to do a musical. I've said this in every interview and I'm still waiting guys. <laughs> I really want to do a musical. Um, like what? what kind of musical? Oh my god! Any like Rent or like Oklahoma? Like I mean, there's I'm I love musicals. I'm not ruling anything out. Okay. Like I'm not ruling anything out. Um, oh, I'd love to do a musical. I think, but I, you know what? What I'm really realizing as well is like so much is script dependent. Like I I ne- I don't have a specific dream role of like. Um, somewhere where I, where I want to get to because I feel like everything is about instinct or like reading a script and going you know what like sometimes you're like I can see how this is right for someone but it doesn't really kind of create a big enough response in me personally to to commit to this and also you know do my best or give the best to the project so it's always about um I just think like being really in tune with what speaks to you. Um, And I mean, the writing is like, it's just the most, I'm like learning that so much is just like the most important thing. Um, You know, and we're so lucky that like, you know, you leave school when you're younger, but now I feel like school for me is, you know, working with directors, actors who I've admired for so long and witnessing how they work and, you know, um, and le- learning in that way, you know, you're constantly soaking things up and, um, yeah, it's amazing. I love that's, it. That's brilliant. I mean, we're so excited to see you, you know, in your next, in your next roles. You've got Kid Bag. Do you have anything else coming up that you can talk about? no no that and and the and the play and then and then who knows after that who knows yeah. <laughs> well like I said I could told your agent as well I feel like I feel like this award season we might we might see you around a little bit given given last year and everything that you've done but a huge congratulations to you truly it's been amazing to see your career um blossom and I can't wait to see what what else you do oh, um, thank you so much it's such a pleasure Thank you so much for your time, Jody. Really great speaking with you.